going on everybody? Welcome back into Byerly Studios. So we are gonna start a new series, a new art series. I'm so excited about this. Now I've been wanting to do this for quite a while and I've been so busy with commissions here in the studio. I've been making some personal projects, but I just wanna break down and start to create some of these, these items. So me and my daughter have been playing with the idea of creating Pokemon dioramas. Now I know that a lot of the content on my channel is, is sculpted tumblers. We're gonna start breaking away from that and do some more diorama pieces and like miniatures and things like that. So we're gonna start with making Pokemon, so I'm super excited. Now there are so many different types of Pokemon, not just Pokemon, Pokemon cards. They have shinies, they have regulars, they have holographic, they have all sorts of different sizes and shapes of Pokemon. They have so many different generations now. I remember when I first uh, started collecting Pokemon cards when I was younger, back in the day, when I had to walk a mile in the snow to school, I had almost all the Pokemon cards, and not all of them were holographic, I'm not gonna act like they were, but we had a, I had a lot of them. And what we did was, uh, during a yard sale one time, I sold the whole binder. It was an old red binder and I had all of them. I used to love looking through my Pokemon cards. I'd organize them alphabetically and then I'd turn around and organize them in the generational series. Like they used to be on, you know, posters you put on your wall. And I sold them. And ever since then, I can't look at a Pokemon card and not think, man, I regret selling those Pokemon cards because I wish I had them because they were holographics. They were not only were they worth a lot, but I wish I had those for my collections and stuff that I could pass down to my kids. So now they have so many that you can collect and choose from and so many generations. They have different types. They split off in different types of evolutions and stuff. Look at Eevee, for instance. They have tons of evolutions of Eevees. So if we did all those dioramas, we'd have like seven, eight, nine, ten thousand pieces of Eevee dioramas. So we're gonna do Pokemon uh, dioramas. I'm super excited. The whole goal of this is not only just to create some fun art in the studio, but it's also to engage my daughter in the creation process. Uh, I wanna let her, you know, talk about the art, uh, you know, expand her horizons as far as playing with the clay. She may be doing clay beside me. It may not be the actual sculpted uh, uh, diorama, but she'll be nearby. We'll do some of the painting together. And that's the whole goal of this, right? The rest of it is just creating content so that y'all can enjoy kind of side seat crafting as it were. So if y'all want to do something similar or just sit back and enjoy it like late at night while you're watching TV before bed, you could do so, right? So, so some of it will be me talking, some of it won't. But the overall series is just us having fun and I want to create some just fun items. So what we'll probably do is I'll probably create most of them on a wood platform, sculpted uh, ecosystem, and then the item itself, maybe with some armatures and stuff. So we're going to start with the basic. And the very basic that I can think of is a ditto a ditto so it mimics any pokemon that it kind of touches or come across and then it can kind of mirror their 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 attacks and things like that i always thought it was kind of op to be able to mimic their 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 abilities but then it kind of got muted as we go so let's jump into the studio and let's start a ditto diorama all right you guys so let's jump into the content here so uh, again this video is about 43 minutes long or so so i'm gonna split this into two videos this first part is all about the resin and the sculpt work so as you can see here i have just a variety pack from amazon of some uh rock cave like geodes quartz geode shapes uh, and i was super excited to use them i'm going to use them in a few projects coming up over the next uh, few, few months to a year uh, so as you can see here in the top uh, corner here i'm uh, notating the uh, what i'm using them for so i'm working on two projects at the same time one is the ditto diorama and then the other one is the miners G uh, geode uh, nightlight for my daughter's room um, she likes to do uh, geode uh, mining uh, at like, you know, theme parks and Dollywood uh, over in Pigeon Forge. So, so she needs a place to put all of those little rocks that she collects uh, doing those activities. So I'm going to build her like a, a glass jar with some, some glow in the dark lights for her room. So as you can see here, uh, so th these are just the Pokemon Ditto uh, uh, pieces of geodes, which call them geodes, that I had casted uh, with the silicone molds. These are pretty tough to get out, I'm not gonna lie, uh, but they're very satisfying. So here's the very first one. I did just an assortment. Uh, it doesn't really matter how you make these, when you make them, where you make them, but I just used Tim Holtz alcohol inks and a little bit of glow powder. I mixed them up in two or three different, uh, different medicine, uh, medicine cups and then I just poured them uh, in layers and then I let them do what they wanted to do. My daughter did pick the colors for the, the both of these sets. So she chose a pink, purple, blue for uh, the Pokemon Ditto, which I think is gonna be pretty cool. 
We don't know if we want to paint the Pokemon Ditto to be a shiny or an original. We don't quite know yet. I might do maybe a holographic, you know, color shift from blue, light blue to purple or something. So we'll see how that goes in video number two. So I'm just like layering these out, separating them out. There's Pokemon Ditto on the left. And then I have the uh, Miner's Geodes on the right, which will be uh, make a reappearance in that video when I make that creation. If I recall, I bought the entire silicone pack of molds for like I think like 12 bucks which isn't bad at all um, you know they're gonna last quite a long time as long as I don't be too rough with them when I remove the the casts uh, and I think that they're, they're gonna be pretty good uh, obviously they have a lot of different shapes and sizes um, you can kind of see that some of them have flat surfaces on them I really do like that they add a little bit of a diversity to those pads so that they're not all the same kind of spiky geode look I know that there's some technical names for these shapes of rock formations. Um, I'm not really going to go into to the the mineral part of this and be super exact. <laughs> Look at that. That is that was tough to remove right there. The bigger uh, silicone molds for these are are so much harder because they have so much contact uh, in on those individual spikes. So if you want to go back and watch the first half, uh, first portion of this video again, you can kind of see some of the color, uh, the, the colors that I had used on that. They are all Tim Holtz alcohol inks that I mixed with those two part epoxies. Uh, but whatever you do, if you want to keep the color code the same, I would recommend you just make sure you pour those in the same session, so that way that color combination isn't varying up. Um, unless you just truly remember how much you poured and how many drops of each one you added, how much glow powder you added. I did include glow powder in these so that they do take a charge after the fact, after the LEDs are turned off. Um, again, so some, one of these on the right hand side is going to be a night light for my daughter's room. So I just want to, when I turn that light off after she's asleep uh, via maybe a smart plug or something like that, then I can... I can, um, it still holds a retaining a little bit of glow, right? So there's just what it looks like with uh, some of the light casting through there. Obviously when I uh, add LEDs to these, these will change slightly. Um, the LED work will come into video number two uh, overall, but I do believe I show a little bit of that here and there throughout this video. So there's the two projects all casted out and ready for their individual projects. All right, so the next stage is for me to go ahead and decide how many LEDs that I would like to include in this project. So I'm beginning uh, with the Miner's Geode Nightlight project, uh, and there's only three of these geodes, right? So uh, obviously we have one large one and then the two smaller ones, because she's going to be able to put a lot of the rocks that she collects in that, in that jar. Uh, but just so that you can kind of get an additional amount of content here, I will include this not only here but also in that video also. I'm using a quarter inch uh, a wood drill bit to drill some pilot holes. I'm trying to keep those uh, clean, just not drill too fast. Uh, it doesn't matter if there's a little bit of uh, chalking on the inside of the hole, that's not a problem. The LED won't, won't matter, it won't, it won't hurt the LED uh, light at all. So. Uh, we're going to go ahead and drill as many holes as we need for each project. I'm just kind of winging it. I just want to make sure that whatever lights I put in there, that they have enough light that it actually feels like it's alive. And it's not just got light in one particular spot and the rest is just all darkened out. So as I drill these out, I kind of send them off to the side in their individual project groups. And I'm not measuring, I didn't put tape on my drill bit or anything like that. I'm just kind of going with the flow. I do kind of test fit here and there just to see how deep I think that the LED needs to be until I can kind of get a hang on it. This is the first time I've done this where I sunk LEDs into something. I've really never used LEDs for anything uh, that I've built. So this is all brand new to me as well. And I'm just kind of excited to be able to use some of this stuff. So a lot of this is just the same material. I went ahead and included the majority of it though. So sit back and enjoy as we run through this time lapse.
So as promised, here's some of the LED lights just kind of glowing. I'm just trying to get an idea of how they glow, how I want them to glow. I have a multi set of LEDs that I purchased from Amazon. Again, I'm just now starting to get into using some LEDs in projects. It's really fun. It's just an extra layer of artisticness to it right because i can make things glow add like you know different items to different projects uh so, so you'll see a lot of leds start to appear in majority of my projects uh most of those i'm going to use nine volt batteries for i think that they're just so much easier to use than uh like a double a or multiple triple a packs when i ordered this entire set of leds and everything from amazon originally i had ordered uh the two two dual battery packs for uh double a batteries and like a dumb dumb i ordered uh nine to 12 volt leds <laughs> so they didn't glow because they didn't have enough voltage so I went ahead and started shifting over to a 9 volt battery system. So I will later on have to order some 9 volt battery packs. I already do have some 9 volt uh, caps to go on top of them so I can get, get by for now. Um, but you got to remember, I'm also going to design a lot of these projects so that they have the capability to have a 5.5 uh, battery pack connected to them from an electrical socket. So you can either power it with an electrical socket or, or you can power it with a 9 volt battery. Obviously, you wouldn't want to have both of them powered at the same time. You know, the electrical circuit would uh, kind of destroy a 9 volt battery. But you, you would have the option to use either one, depending on which one you would plug into the 5.5 um, female prong of the power system. So you'll see that reappear in video number two as we get to those stages. All right, so if you follow me on YouTube and on uh, TikTok, you also saw, maybe not too long ago, I posted this a short clip, and this is just a clip showing the stages of glow. When I first created these geodes, I was just so excited about them that I kind of just sat in the dark looking at them glow. So it just shows the stages of glow between regular light, UV light, under regular light, and then no light at all after they're charged with the glow powders. And they really do hold their charge, which is pretty exciting. So you can definitely check that video out later. It is under my YouTube channel and on TikTok, of course. As a note here, if you don't follow me on YouTube, make sure you do so. The support here is really what I'm aiming for. I love TikTok. It's very fun. I've met so many great artists on TikTok, but I'm really trying to throw all of my, uh, all of my energy into YouTube just because I believe I can put out longer form content that people can truly enjoy binge watch and also create, create their own projects by watching some of mine. I love watching other people's YouTube videos, and uh, I hope that they enjoy mine as well. All right, so as you can see here now, this was originally the very first part of this build. I didn't have LEDs, I didn't have the geodes, I didn't have anything. This was months ago. Me and my daughter began this process and it was before I even was really pushing into YouTube content and things like that. So we were just making it to have fun. Obviously I was recording some of it. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to create a environmental base, right? An ecosystem for the dittos or Pokemon in general, not just the ditto. Uh, and I went ahead and created a aluminum armature. So it's just packed aluminum into, into uh, the shape of an overall just ooey, gooey, drippy ditto. And then we layered on um, clay across the entire wooden base. I believe it's just a cheap pine base from like uh, Michael's or Hobby Lobby. So don't overthink the wooden base. There's really nothing to it. And later on down the road, even the wooden base transforms a little bit. So it just disappears. The most important thing that I wanted at this point in time is I wanted it to have a waterfall effect. I really did I really did enjoy the waterfall effect that I had made for Scary Larry the Ghost. If you haven't had the opportunity to see that, then I will post a video in the top right hand corner. There it is. And that is where I'm just kind of making a waterfall effect. I really want to display a lot of these on my shelves in my studio. Just bring some light and some creativity to the shelves that I have around me. And it's just inspiration to me. 
and I wanted it to be able to put that on my shelves and then it cascade over the edge and I just believe that kind of brings even more of a 3d feel to it and it just brings the item out into the studio more so if it was just flat on a shelf I'm not saying I don't have items flat on a shelf I'm just saying I like that projection out in a way it's an extra level of challenge that that I really do enjoy so again, this was the initial, this was months and months ago. So things did change. I ended up setting this off to the side for months. And it, uh, of course, you know, uh, oven baked clay, although it doesn't cure when it's set out, it does kind of dry out and become more brittle. So when you start to work with it again, you got to warm it up or uh, it can it can cause cracking, it gets cold and, and things like that. So this is uh, where we are at this point in time. I had picked it back up and I was going to begin the process again. I did cut quite a bit of clay off and as you can see the ditto because it's aluminum uh, on the bottom and not clay it was starting to lift off and pull off of the base. So it was just kind of sloppy from where I left it before. It was never even remotely in any stages of completion and it's just it was just falling apart. So what I went ahead and did is I went ahead and kind of kind of just reworked the base a little bit, warmed it up, re-sculpted it a little bit, and then I put a uh, ruler off on the back, and I decided to make the base only about three and a half to four inches in depth, and that is the depth of my primary shelves that I have in front of me right now. I may build some deeper ones later, but for now, this is what I have. I like those shallow shelves just because they give me more room on my uh, uh, my my countertop that I work on here. So then I went ahead and began the process of layering in the geodes. I did this in a slow manner and what I did is I went ahead and just kind of pushed them into the clay and because I've already drilled those pilot holes it gives me an idea where I need to drill the holes for the wiring later. So each hole is going to leave a little indention in the clay and that gives me an idea where I need to drill those holes and in what direction. The, the wooden base is hollow on, on the bottom so I can uh, put all of the circuitry and wiring underneath the actual diorama. So I'm just trying to decide where I want all these little, little geos to be and then I kind of just work in the clay up and around them and every so often I'll switch over to the ditto. I want the ditto to have just an ooey gooey drip effect and I'll kind of intensify that drip as it goes through its processes. So I'll put some drips in clay form and then I'll put some drips in the paint and make the paint runny and drippy and it's going to be kind of changing and evolving over time. I do know that I want it to have a little bit of an oozy effect. Uh, maybe with some like a uh, uh, UV resin where it drips down off of the ditto into the rock crevices as I begin to sculpt those. Um, I wasn't sure where to put this last little geode. I was almost thinking about putting it on top of the head, making it a little crown, but I'm like, man, I want it to be a noticeable shape of a ditto. Even if I'm making it slightly more realistic, I still want it to have that shape so that people can say, hmm, that's a ditto. That's a Pokemon ditto. You know, I don't want people to say, what in the world is that thing? So I will just notate here that there are portions where I had to cut away the clay and not just the clay, reinforce it a little bit because there were two different sessions between where I originally started the base and then I removed the ditto, put it back on and started blending it back in again at, at this point in time, right? So this is more recent. Uh, and I went ahead and also cut away some of that aluminum foil. So I just used an X-Acto knife and some scissors and some side cutters to just go ahead and cut away that so that way it's not in my way. I don't have to impression that. And if I did impression it, if there was any air or voids in there, then it would move clay around it as well. So I want the ditto to hold its shape where it is where I put it. And I'm going to go ahead and reinforce that right now. So as I work through this process, I'm just kind of just putting the, the geodes into position where I think that I want them. And then I'm just going to go ahead and fill in the, the edges and the sides of them with clay, kind of frame the, the bottoms of each geode in to make them look like they're kind of inserted or existing in the, uh, the rock formation. Uh, so all of this rock is going to be kind of a gray tone. Uh, I might add some different colors in it just for um, some variation and some pop. But the main color uh, source for the rock formations are the geodes, right? So uh, although I am going to go ahead and remove, uh, add here and there until I get the overall shape of the, the gray rock, um, it, it, it's just, uh, just adding and subtracting until we get it the way we want it. I am using just a, just a sculpting tool there. 
uh, and I'm being very rough with the clay, just moving it wherever I want. I'm not worried about texture or anything right now. Just blocking it in, get the clay around the geodes where I want them, and then we can take it from there. So you'll also notice that I'm going to start jumping to the ditto itself now. So I want it to have like a really drippy look to it uh, when it's all said and done. Uh, and later on in the process, it does uh, have a lot of smoothing layers. Uh, I come back and smooth those layers over and over again until I get the desired uh, uh, you know, texture that I want on the ditto itself. But I'm also going to go ahead and not only build out the rocks, but I'm building out little ripples in the edges of the ditto skin or not skin, his, his liquefied body, where he would be kind of draping over those existing rock formations, kind of creating like just a small lip or a rolled over edge where the ooze may be coming down off his body onto those, those rock structures. So I'm kind of doing that a little bit at a time. That'll take, that'll take shape over the next, you know, last portion of the video here, and you'll kind of see that I'll add more and more and more of those little ripples. But right now we're still trying to figure out where I want all the geodes, kind of getting them cut out and, you know, put into place. Uh, that way we can kind of just move forward with the ditto itself. That way I know where those rolls and all of the drippy edges need to be. I'm also like having a debate with myself in this portion of the video, trying to decide which way I want that little quartz geode to, sh uh, to face. You know, it's going to be facing forward at all times because of the waterfall effect on the shelf. It's not like I'll be turning it to its side or anything like that, but I just wanted to have the best side facing forward. <laughs> so I had a little debate with myself on which one, I, which, which side I'd like for it to be facing forward, you know. And I also decided to angle that down a little bit so that way just more of that, more of that uh, fun uh, structure is showing towards the front of the diorama. And then what I'll do is I'll build up that material uh, at, under and behind that, that uh, resin cast there. So we're continuously adding clay just behind that little uh, geode there and I'm just working that down and around the back of the ditto's body. Uh, I, originally I was just going to make the ditto's body just completely just down to the back of the wood right there. Uh, but as I started to work on it more and more and I started to take that rock formation down away from that, uh, that geode right there we're working on, I, I decided to continue that rock formation around the back of the item there. And you'll also see that there's a, there's a gap between the bottom of the ditto's body and the back piece of clay there. And that's because I had left it alone, alone for so long that the ditto separated from the original base of clay. And then there was a gap there. So uh, as you can see, I'm trying, trying to work on the ditto at the same time thinking about the, where I would like the rock formation to be. And I do decide to go ahead and take that rock formation on the back all the way across. And by adding more clay around that bottom, it does allow me to repair that broken seam line there so there's not a, a gap in the clay. And that would be just a weakened piece of the sculpture. So continuously building out and you'll see me work that rock formation around the back of the dew in just a moment. So again, I'm still having that internal d debate with myself of where I want that little geo to go. I decided to put it right there in the middle of his, I guess, his draping leg or the, the front part of the, his body rolling over the waterfall effect there. Uh, and I just, I just felt like it would give it a nice, nice color of sheen there with that, with that LED in there when it's all said and done. So I went ahead and just cut that away and then just, I'm going to create just a ripple effect around that existing geode. Now I will say that after I remove these later before the baking process, uh, they are extremely tight. Um, uh, of course, because I sculpted everything around the geos, um, I should have given it a little bit more wiggle before I remove them. Uh, it's okay. I do have to do a little bit of removing with an X-Acto knife a after the 
the, the clay is baked and, and permanently uh, in, its, in its existing uh, position. So I have to shave some clay away to get all the rocks to fit where I want them to be. Whether that was they were too tight originally or whether the clay was um, it, it, it kind of warped because it got too hot or too cold during the baking process. It, there's no telling. But in the long run, it's all, it's all, when it's all done, none of that matters because they all fit perfectly. But it did require a little bit extra work to make sure that they all fit after the baking process because I made them so tight. So you can really start to see the, 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 the difference in the, the body texture of the ditto and the rock formation. Now, as I begin to apply texture to that rock with just an aluminum foil, Anybody who's seen me make the rock formation for any of the other builds that I've been doing, uh, you, you know I love my, uh, my aluminum foil, uh, wire brushes, aluminum foils to make rock formations. I just like the aluminum foil because you can kind of shape it how you'd like to. You can scrape it across the clay. You can dimple it. You can push the clay with the aluminum foil to create um, uh, crevices and, and cracks and all sorts of fun things. And it's also randomized. Every time you, you touch it, it the, the, the aluminum foil could be in a different position and it can leave a different texture. Uh, but at the same time, because you're using the same method throughout the entire process, it does, it does look like it's one piece when it's all said and done. And then later on during the painting process, when we add all those nice grunge uh, earth colors and grays and, and Mars black and browns, and, and we'll probably put some color, uh, pops of color in there as well, maybe some fungus. Uh, rock fungus or something like that, then it, it'll really take shape. Alright, so here's where you're going to start to see me add more of those little little drip ripples off of the Ditto's body. Um, and I kind of add these sporadically, just where, my, where I feel like they should be is where I drop them in. It's not like I can't come in later and remove them if I just felt like they were in the wrong place, or even just press them into the existing clay body and make them disappear. Uh, I just didn't want to rely on just paint to give a drip effect. I just felt like that would be too subtle. It may not show up under the, uh, the, the shadowed lights when I have them on in the dark. And I just wanted to make sure that I'm able to put them in deep enough in a 3D texture so that anything that I add on as far as paint drips later would just be an, uh, just an, an addition to an existing already amazing sculpted item, right? So anything at, uh, after the, the sculpting would be just extra. So just adding those, those ripples in here and there smoothing it a little bit as I go. I do know that I want the body to be pretty smooth overall. Ditto in himself, in all of the, the cartoons and any of the Pokemon cars, it, when he's in his Ditto form, he is very smooth, very jelly, and, and that's also one of the reasons that I picked him as the first Pokemon for me and my, my daughter to create here. So it, it's just a really fun item because I'm able to smooth out the clay and it doesn't have a bunch of armature legs and arms and things like that so just something simple for us to do and it's turning out to be very fun to create so I'm just going to continuously adding these little ripples until I uh, just feel comfortable with where they are and I'll also add them all the way down the the over uh, waterfall over over waterfall effect there until I, uh, you know, just just like how it looks. I don't want to go above. I don't want to go crazy with it, but I, I just want there to be uh, enough to be noticeable.
So one thing here is I did decide to leave this little this little divot right there in front of the Ditto's main body a divot. And I did add some ripples around it, but I wanted to leave that just uh, just a recess right there. Whether I put a little bit of clear resin liquid in there or I just leave it just open, like a, just a little bowl effect, whatever that it may be. I, thought, I just thought that was pretty cool. Now, at this point, I'm not done sculpting, but I went ahead and used my first round of uh, rubbing alcohol. And I'm just using that with a very stiff bristle brush. Just go ahead and begin to soften the exterior of the clay and remove some of the fingerprints and some of those little little sculpt, sculpted uh, push marks that I've been using. Um, here, I could not resist myself. I wanted to charge up the, the geos to see what they look like. Now, under a black light or a UV light, these things are going to be extremely bright. Not only do they have the inks in there, and they're going to have LEDs, but they also have the glow powder. And look at that glow powder. Just after like a minute of charging with the UV light, this is what we have so far. They are so gorgeous. Now, they glow blue because I use blue glow powders. And then when you do not have the glow, uh, uh, the, the UV light on, then they just glow just a normal light blue uh, under normal lights. So this is what it looks like so far up to this point. And there's a the top right hand corner of just a picture of those glowing geodes. So this is of course a completely different uh, uh, session. You can see I'm beginning to roll over some larger uh, uh, body drips and ripples off of the main Ditto's body. I'm kind of just really pushing those outward over the existing uh, geode shapes and the rock formations and I'm really trying to create that isolation between the ditto and the rock so that when I shade all of that the underside of those ripples will be darker they'll be light on the exterior kind of a glare and then you'll see a little bit of a dip in color uh, uh, and shadow on the interior of each of those ripples just to give it some more overall shading and shine I do believe that the the paint that I'm going to use uh, for final effect will probably be a color shifting paint. I would really like to incorporate, and I'm still debating, going with a, a light pink or lavender color shifting paint from Folk Art. I'll probably use an air gun to apply most of that, but I will also let my daughter apply some of that by hand, and we'll just see how it turns out. After all, that's the whole point of most of these, these projects is that me and her can do some of these portions of the build together. I do believe that having that rock formation around the back of the Ditto did kind of bring it all together. And I like that even though it's probably sticking out a little bit further than I originally intended. It does create a little bit of a shadowed cliff effect right there on the back of the Ditto. Alright, so now I'm going to begin the process of kind of framing in where I believe that the face would be. A lot of the pictures in the cartoons have Ditto smiling, and I didn't want to just do a full-on smile, but I also didn't want it to be something that you couldn't recognize as Ditto. So I have to include some kind of mouth in some way, and I don't want it to be scary. I don't want it to be nasty looking. I just want it to be just pleasant. Real, somewhat realistic but pleasant if that makes sense so I wanted to have the eyes I want to have the the, the 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 impression of a mouth in the existing ripples that I've been applying already so they'll be all the same shade and if you happen to see the mouth you happen to see the mouth if you miss it it's just because ditto's a blob right So I did feel like that the smile was slightly too smiley, too happy. So I do bring those corners down here in a moment. Uh, and I will say that during this process, my daughter was sitting beside me because I was asking her, hey, do you think this is smiling too much? Does this look like this ditto in this picture? What do you think about the eyes? What do you think about this? What do you want me to change differently? Do you want it to smile more? You want it to frown more? You want drips here or there? And we were just having a good old time just talking about things and, and giggling and, and just acting a fool. And I did catch some of that, the best portions of that um, on audio. So here in just a second, I'm going to cut out and you can listen to some of that fun banter back and forth of my daughter and me just being goofy 
and just acting a fool inside the studio. So uh, come on into the studio with us and enjoy this audio that, that I've recorded. Um, it, it's definitely enjoyable and something I want to save. I didn't do no iPads. You have to do a little. Not iPads. It's called a little. Mm -hmm. You know what that thing is? And you make it. <laughs> <laughs> He's funny, isn't he? Yeah. What are you going to do? Blend this in. Oh. Just trying to make his eyes a little bit more pronounced. Yeah. He's the fun guy. That, that, that Pokemon is a funny one. It changed to Eevee too. And remember Pikachu? Uh -huh. he, I do remember Pikachu. He turned to Pikachu and the Pikachu did this face. <laughs> <laughs> like this. That's in the uh, Pikachu movie, wasn't it? Yeah, like. You gotta do a straight face. Oh, yeah. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> like this. <laughs> How about this? <laughs> How about this? <laughs> How about the blank eyes? Like. <laughs> I do. That's a pretty good one. What about this? Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> I like the, my TV. I and do you know the mushroom I'm like this? Huh? <laughs> 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 and what about his back? That like this. <laughs> Here you go. Watch this. Oh, my iPad died. No more music for us. They watch mm. this. I love that that's something that I can just look back on and listen to when I get old and decrepit and I can just be like, wow, we had such a great time together in the studio. And that's the whole point of some of these videos is not only is it allowing me to track my projects and, and share them with you guys and, and we'll obviously maybe become monetized eventually and make a few dollars here and there, but uh, I also can allow her to go back in time and see some of these videos and see some of the things that we did together. Um, in her younger years just fun things so you can see that the ditto is really taking shape I did add arms to him as well there uh, they're simple they're just literally just poking out of the edges of his body uh, I didn't want to leave those off I did feel like they, they added a, a nice um, cartoon realistic look to him and it kind of just brings the overall ditto forward a little bit so now I'm going to go ahead and remove the uh the geodes here and we are nearing the end almost the end of this portion of the build again this is a uh, video number one right so we removed removed all of those and we're going to get it ready to be baked i'm just carving out those those holes for the leds just so i have an idea of where they are and then this is what it looks like i know it looks kind of weird right now the ditto itself looks very cool uh, but it just looks kind of odd missing all of those those rock formations. So I am going to hit it one more time with a very, very uh, a liberal amount of, of uh, rubbing alcohol here. And I'm being very forceful. I'm also being very um, intentive on which direction my brush strokes are going. I want to make sure that my brush strokes, because I am using a very stiff bristle brush, are going in the direction of the ripples. So if I want it to ripple downward, I'm just rubbing that along the exterior of the ripple so in, a, in an arc, an uh, upward arc form, so that it has kind of striations in the clay. Now some of the paint will get caught in those striations and maybe it'll give it a cool effect, but if nothing else, uh, if it did have a sheen or if some of that texture were to come through, the sheen would be in the direction of the existing existing movements of the ditto. 
So it's something small, but uh, I mean, obviously if you went down straight down its back or straight down the middle of its face with a brush stroke, and you were to pick up on that after it's all painted, then that would just that would just be an eyesore. So we don't want to have all that. And you got to remember that he's going to have light cascading all over his face in the dark. So so things might change up a little bit here and there, but. I just want to make sure that we give it as much detail as possible. I did use a wire tool here uh, just to add a few more striations in that overflow part right there, the waterfall effect. I just wanted to add a little bit more texture there just for just something to draw the eye. And then I went over it with the alcohol ink again. It's looking very good. I like how smooth the ditto is looking in contrast to the rocks. And I really think the rock formation is going to be nice when we get it all grayed and brown and, and colored out. Here's the back of the ditto. It's looking really good. I love that uh, rippling rollover effect over the rock there. And then of course Ditto's face. Ditto! <laughs> I really like how this has turned out. I hate that I, was, I had to sit it off to the side for so long for a while there. I just got caught up with so many other projects that I just couldn't get back around to it. So I'm glad to be able to pick this up and use some LEDs and things like that to get this thing finished up. All right, so after baking, here we are. I'm trying to just dry fit uh, the geos into place just to make sure they fit. Obviously, you can see right there that that one did not fit very well. So I do have to do some X-Acto knife carving into the, the already baked cured clay. So it's a give and take, uh, we'll remove some of it a little bit at a time until I get the desired fit. They are very tight, so in all reality I may not have to use much adhesive to attach these after I get it painted. So what I might do is I might apply one or two little drops of E6000 uh, adhesive just to hold it into place if it were to be dropped. But if I don't ad adhere it too much, then that would allow me to remove it and replace LEDs easily in the future or make repairs or add more LEDs. So although I might put a few drops in there to keep them in place, they're pretty tight and I don't really have to worry about them going anywhere. And this is just going to be up on the shelf. So uh, if I did want to remove them and it had two drops of adhesive, maybe it would just remove the acrylic paint base that I'll apply to that. So we'll just see how that goes. That's less important than the overall paint and, and the, the uh, sculpting theme that we have going on. What do you think, guys? This thing turned out beyond my expectations. I hope you all enjoyed this long format video, and I look forward to video number two where we'll be painting this bad boy and adding all of the LED circuits. Again, thank you for all you do, guys. I hope you enjoyed this content. I will catch you on the next video. Later, guys.